Hey guys, Mark Thomas here. I wanted to give you my review of the latest ISACA guidance on COVID-2019 and is specifically around implementing the NIST cybersecurity framework using COVID-2019. Now, many enterprises lack an approach that integrates cybersecurity standards and enterprise governance of information and technology to establish a systematic yet flexible and achievable governance and management program. This publication describes proven practices to anticipate, understand, and optimize these information and technology risks by implementing the U.S. National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity. This is version 1.1 using COVID-2019. Folks, I've read this publication and wanted to offer you my thoughts on the value of this new guide and what it can bring to you. Now, this NIST CSF implementation has guidance with measurable governance and management practices. It maps steps and activities to COVID 2019, and there are appendices for quick references and further considerations. Now, I want to be fully transparent with you. I was one of the expert reviewers on this guide, so of course I'm going to give it good ratings. You should allow me to brag about it just a little bit but let's talk about what this course includes there are three documents out there that really this book brings in one the framework for improving critical infrastructure cybersecurity this is the csf the cybersecurity framework was created in response to executive order 13636 it's a technology neutral cybersecurity framework again currently on version 1.1 has a couple of areas to it. It has what's called the core. The core includes activities, outcomes, and industry standards, guidelines, and practices that communicate cybersecurity activities. It has what we call the tiers. Those are levels of implementation. It has profiles, which are the alignment of standards, guidelines, and practices into the framework core. And it has implementation guidance, which is what we are focused on here. It suggests a methodology to adopting the NIST cybersecurity framework in an iterative fashion, which just so happens to be aligned with COVID-2019. COVID-2019. Now, I'm not going to dive into the depth of the framework of COVID-2019. You can find information on that. But we want to talk about the implementation guidance. This is the implementation guide. This has been updated from previous versions of COVID. It's used in conjunction with a design guide which provides a continual improvement life cycle approach with seven phases and three perspectives. Finally, we have the design guide. This is brand new to COBIT. This introduces focus areas and design factors, and it includes a design workflow that facilitates the creation of a tailored governance system. And when used in conjunction with the implementation guide and the NIST CSF implementation steps, this becomes a powerful tool for you. Basically, what you're looking at here is the overall outline of this guide. Of course, you have an executive summary and an introduction. In that introduction, we talk about governance and management of enterprise information and technology, how COVID-2019 distinguishes governance from management. We look at something called the Goals Cascade, components of the governance system, the core model for COVID, which we'll look at here in just a little bit, performance management, the design guide, design factors, and implementation guidance. We talk about the NIST CSF. In the NIST CSF or the cybersecurity framework, we talk, of course, about the background, the coordination of implementation, the framework core, tiers, and profiles, like we talked about earlier, risk considerations, and the risk function perspective, as well as the risk management perspective. We jump right down into implementation. This is the relationship of the CSF implementation steps and the COVID-2019 implementation phases. We'll talk about those soon. Here is the core of this document. So we wanna make sure we're aligning the CSF with COVID. So there's three areas we're aligning here. You look up here on the top left, we have the NIST CSF 1.1 implementation steps. We have COVID-2019 implementation steps, and finally, the COVID-2019 design guide steps that we mentioned earlier. How do we align these areas? Well, first of all, we have the CSF implementation steps. Notice we have nine steps. I'm not going to cover them here because the guide covers them for you. But what we do 
is we align those with the implementation steps for COVID 2019. This is huge, folks. Now you can go through an iterative approach to how you not only adopt and adapt COVID 2019, but how you do this with the cybersecurity framework. But there's more. If you order today, you can get the COVID 2019 design guide steps. This is a new guide to COVID that helps us create a tailored governance system. And wouldn't you agree that your cybersecurity framework should also be part of your tailored governance system? Again, we don't cover this in this short video, but I wanted to make sure you understood the power and the breadth of what we're talking about in this guide. You can find more information out about NIST, CSF, COBIT, and the design guide on the escout.com e-learning site. Next, we go to my publication review. So even though I was an expert reviewer on this guide, I do have some points that I want to make sure you're aware of. Anytime I'm reviewing a publication, I want to make sure there are some key attributes at which I'm evaluating that publication at. One is, is the information relevant to my industry? I give this guide a five. Is the content up to date with information that can further my professional goals? Yes, I give this a five. Was I able to gain knowledge that I can take to work tomorrow? I personally would give this a 5, but I give this a 4.5 because some of the things may be different for each of you out there, and we'll explain that in a minute. Was the information from reputable sources? Definitely a 5. And finally, is the content easy to understand and apply? I gave it a 4.5. I personally would give it a 5, but again, this depends on your background and your knowledge of COVID and NIST. So let's take each one of those and I'll give you my thoughts. Number one, is the information relevant to my industry? I will tell you this, all industries, it doesn't matter who you are. If you store, use, and process information and knowledge and you need to protect that information, this is relevant to you. If you are a professional who is charged with information processing, protection, and assurance of the data information and knowledge, this is relevant to you. Specific areas that you see on the right. It doesn't matter if you're a governing body. For example, the board of directors, you could definitely use this. C-level leadership, without a doubt. Business leadership, IT service providers, risk management, audit, and assurance, security, and compliance. This is relevant to anybody in this industry who basically stores and processes information and you need to secure and protect that information. I give this a five. Next is the content up to date with information that can further my professional goals. It's hard to stay on top of every framework in our high velocity environment. But I will tell you this, folks, you are looking at the latest and greatest information by ISACA and NIST when it comes to governance and management of enterprise IT and providing a cybersecurity framework. As you know, in our industry, things change all the time, even though we have the most recent information out there. You certainly should keep track of the Asaka site, NIST site, or the Scout site to see what the latest and greatest is out there. But I will give this a five. Next, was I able to gain knowledge that I can take to work tomorrow? Of course, I'd give it a five, but I'm thinking this is more of a four and a half because this depends on you. Who you are, what your role is, and your knowledge of COBIT and the CSF. It definitely gives you actionable implementation information. However, that depends on your ability to influence, adopt, and adapt these things in your organization. Folks, the information is there. Can you use it? Can you implement it? And can you gain value from it? This is big. So the CSF links the CSF subcategories and the COVID 2019 governance and management objectives down to the practice level. I will show you an example of that here in a few minutes. So I will say it's a five, but you can go with 4.5 because this is different depending on what you do in your knowledge of the frameworks. Was the information from reputable sources? Well, you guys know, let's start with ISACA. This is an independent nonprofit global association and they engage in the development, adoption, and use of globally accepted information system knowledge and practices. So ISACA is particularly noted for key professional designations such as C-Guide, C-Risk, CISM, and CISA, 
and they are also the developer and the owner of the COBIT framework. Next, you have NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, was founded in 1901. They're now part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. The NIST cybersecurity framework was created in response to Executive Order 13636. They met with industry partners to create a risk-based and technology-neutral voluntary cybersecurity framework, and the result was the CSF. Interestingly, the CSF also links to other sources, and that's what we call informative references. Those would be ISO, the International Standards Organization, primarily ISO 27001, the Center for Internet Security, or the Critical Security Controls, ISA, the Standard for Security Capabilities for Control System Components, and so on. So you'll see that this information came from reputable sources. I give this a five. Finally, is the content easy to understand and apply? Now, you guys know you can't open up any one of these framework books and thumb through it on a plane ride and say, aha, I get it, which is why I gave it a 4.5. But this does require some knowledge of COBIT and NIST. If you don't know these two, you're going to be completely lost. Now, application of this is based on a lot of things, most notably, number one, your organizational structures, how your organization is organized, how you identify levels of authority, spans of control, delegations of authority, and the identification of your decision-making bodies. Of course, it depends on the current maturity level of your governance posture. How well does your organization see governance of enterprise IT, and are we at a high or low state of maturity, and finally, Culture. Culture is the secret killer of any one of these. Culture is one of the most important critical success factors out there. Now, when I say the content is easy to understand and apply, I give it a 4.5. Again, I'm assuming most organizations get it, but sometimes you don't. I don't want you to take just my word for it, so I grabbed another expert, Greg Witt. To chime in on the subject, Greg's a security engineer and cybersecurity instructor, but most importantly, he's my friend and colleague. He was an expert reviewer for the team that put together this guide that we're talking about today. Greg, hey, I wanted to get your input and thoughts on implementing the NIST cybersecurity framework using COBIT. Can you share with our listeners some of your perspective, please? Thanks, Mark, and I'd be glad to. You've already provided some great insights into this product, so I'm really glad that you're doing this review. And as you did, let me just take a moment to ensure full disclosure myself. I'm a contractor for NIST, so while I don't speak for the government, I do get to work day to day supporting some of the greatest researchers in this industry at the NIST IT lab. But I've also been a member of ISACA for going on 20 years, so I've really gotten a chance to see COBIT evolve as well. And as you mentioned, I was a reviewer with you and a contributor to this guide. One thing I would add to the, the point you made on that last slide is that I do think that some people would be able to pick up this book and have it help them give them a, at least a basic understanding of both the NIST cybersecurity framework and of COBIT 2019. I don't know that they'll start memorizing governance and management objectives, but I do think it will help them get a basic feel for how those pieces work. One of the points that I made in a recent blog post is that NIST really wanted industry to develop implementation models. And ISACA did just that with this model. Uh, it really helps folks understand how these two pieces can work together in a practical and meaningful way. One key takeaway to remember is that cybersecurity framework is really all about conversations. While there's lots of control frameworks out there, the real purpose of this one is to provide some structure to talk about what's important from a security perspective. Where are we today? Where do we think we need to be? And how might we get there? So COBIT gives us a way that we can do that in a very structured way. It helps us use the goals cascade to determine those priorities. It gives us activities that we can use to document the as is and the to be in a way that's tailored to the organization, like through the design factors that you mentioned. All of that enables us to build an action plan with metrics and accountability. So you can see how these two work together, and it really is going to help organizations to provide a flexible and valuable way to improve their cybersecurity. So I agree with you. I think it's a really good partnership. Greg, thanks so much for your perspective. You know, I agree with you. 
that this is all about having conversations around cybersecurity and how these frameworks can be flexible and valuable for many organizations. All right, next I'd like to walk you through a few more details about this that I think you might find very interesting and applicable for your enterprise. As mentioned before, as of this recording, we are on the NIST CSF 1.1 which was released in 2018. Remember I said that we have these things called functions. Notice across the top, we have functions, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Those are broken down into categories and subcategories. Each one of those subcategories also has informative references. I'll show you that here in just a few minutes. But first I wanna show you how this links back to the COVID framework. Remember the COVID framework, I have 40 governance and management objectives. A governance domain you see here on the left, EDM. On the management domains, we have APO, DAI, DSS, and MEA. Here's what's interesting when people say, why should we have two separate frameworks? Well, you can have a single overarching framework that's driven by COBIT because COBIT and the NIST CSF have multiple connections and here's what they are. Folks, take a look at this. Every one of those governance and management objectives, minus just a handful, have a link into the NIST CSF, and I wanna show you that. And we'll look at those informative references in this demo that I'm going to do for you out of the CSF guide. If you go to the NIST CSF framework on the Excel spreadsheet that's provided to you as a tool, Remember, we had functions, categories, subcategories, and what were called informative references. We're talking specifically here about COVID 2019 practices. Back over under the functions, we see identify. Remember, that was the first of several functions. Under that function, we have multiple categories. In this case, we have asset management. And under asset management, we have multiple subcategories. And under those subcategories, we have relevant COVID 2019 practices. The information you see here, you can find in the COVID 2019 guides. The next thing you see here, we have implementation status. We talked about that under the implementation tiers, organizational practices that support that, your process rating, whether you're using a maturity or capability level, both would be typically zero through five, implementation status, your comments, actions, and resources required. There you have it, folks. That is my input and my evaluation of implementing the NIST cybersecurity framework using COBIT 2019. Of course, I have a little bit of bias because I was part of that group, but I wanted to bring in other experts into this quick video as well as give you my perspective of why I think this document's important for you. Of course, you can follow me on scout.com, markthomasonline.com, Twitter at scout1 or LinkedIn, folks. I hope I've given you information and knowledge that you can take to work tomorrow.